Uh, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today for today's meeting of the Board of Environmental Safety. My name is Jessica Swan. I am a public participation specialist for the Department of Toxic Substances Control, and I will be assisting and facilitating today's meeting. This meeting is being recorded, and by your continued participation, it is acknowledgement of being recorded. So today is June 10th, uh, 2022 at exactly 10 a.m., and the meeting is now called to order. Thank you, Jessica. Will you please call the roll? Of course. Jeannie Ritzo? Here. Shishma Bhatia? Here. Georgette Gomez? Here. Alexis Strauss-Hacker? Here. And Lizette Ruiz is absent today. So we have four of five board members and a quorum is established. So um, today's meeting uh, is being webcast. There are uh, English and Spanish call-in lines for remote participation. So if you would like to join, <clears throat> participate by phone, the English number is 800-857-9673. Again, 800-857-9601. And the code is 9312824. Um, the call-in number for the Spanish line is 888-469-3215. Um, and the code is 9312824. Um, so if public members um, that are joining the Spanish call in line, we will begin the consecutive Spanish translation um, or if any member of the public joins us. Um, currently, we do not have any participants on the Spanish line um, and we do not have any Spanish participants, but I will still have my colleague um, welcome everyone in Spanish and explain how to get to the Spanish line just in case. Manuel. Uh, gracias, Jessica. Buenos días, sean todos y todas bienvenidas y bienvenidos. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy en la reunión de la Junta de Seguridad Ambiental. Si, si se unió en persona hoy y desea que esta reunión se traduzca al español, comuníquese con Jessica Swan después de este anuncio. Para participar por teléfono, llame al número 888-469-3214. Y introduzca el código 9312824. Nuevamente, el número es 888-469-3214. E introduzca el código 9312824. La interpretación para esta reunión se proporcionará solamente si es solicitada. Thank you so much, Manuel. So, um, so I want to take a few moments to review logistics and housekeeping for the meeting. So please look around you and find the nearest two exits to you. Um, it, please note that the exits may be behind you. So in the event of a fire alarm, we are required to evacuate the room. So please take your valuables with you and do not use the elevators. Staff will endeavor to assist you to the nearest exit. Exit signs are mounted on the ceiling above, um, above the exit doors. So evacuees will exit down the stairs and possibly to a relocation site that is across the street. If you cannot use the stairs, you'll be directed to a protect, protective vestibule inside a stairwell. Uh, should we have to locate, relocate out of the building, please obey all traffic si signals and exercise caution when crossing the streets. Uh, for housekeeping items, the drinking fountains are out the double doors and to the left, down the hall, past the glass sculptures on the ceiling, and then you'll find them on your right. Um, so meeting materials are available in English and Spanish on the BES website, which is www.bes.dtsc. .ca.gov. We also have physical copies in the hallway out of the doors. So um, there will be opportunities to comment throughout the agenda. Um, if you've joined in person, um, you can raise your hand at the time of the, uh, the time of the agenda item that you would like to comment on. And we will um, 
assist you there. If you have joined by phone, uh, you can press star one to join the queue during the agenda item that you would like to provide comment on. Um, and when you are commenting, please provide your name and affiliation at the prompt. If you would like to express your comment in writing, you can email us at besinfo at bes.dtsc.ca.gov. What is this? Oh, I apologize. Okay, so um, that completes our today's logistics. So I will uh, pass it over to Swati for our uh, next agenda item. Next agenda item, we will be reviewing um, the agenda item number two, discussion and possible action to approve funding of up to $187,277.50 for logistic design and facilitation services. Under this interagency agreement, hashtag 21-T5096 agreement, California State University, university or contractor would provide meeting logistics design and facilitation services to the Department of Toxic Substance Control and the Board of Environmental Safety. The budget for the project can be found under Exhibit B of the agreement, and the project purpose and scope of the work is summarized as follows. In support of BES, services are needed to conduct and facilitate board meetings, workshops, public stakeholder meetings, trainings, presentations, work group meetings, and outreach to engage the public in implementation and mandates of SB 158. These meetings and events will assist the board in providing timely and thoroughly thorough information to the public and in receiving public input. Assistance is needed in producing technical and, guiding, and guidance documents, in preparing and editing documents to ensure information is presented clear and easy to understand. DTSC has engaged the universities to support this effort. The following describes the necessary scope of services for BES support. Task one, conduct project research and kickoff. DTSC and BES will meet with the contractor to discuss this agreement, including details of performing the tasks, budget, DTSC and BES expectations, and issues or challenges to resolve. The contractor will review project background and history, such as enabling legislation, partnership with state agencies, public participants, DTSC and BES goals and objectives, and relevant reports and plans. Task two, support event structure content. The contractor will develop the content, content and structure of workshop, public meetings and events, including refining the scope of work, designing outreach, developing a facilitation strategy, communication with and engagement of participants, collecting pre-meeting data, categorizing planning topics, preparing for the meeting and facilitating planning meetings, facilitating the meeting, developing agendas, uh, presentation, presentation materials and announcements, coordinating with language interpretation, translation consultants for a separate agreement between DTS, BES, and said contractor. The project manager will approve the final version of material prior to distribution, given a small budget appropriations for materials. The contractor will be responsible for identifying the appropriate volume of and means of producing meeting and event materials. In collaboration with DTSC and BES, the contractor will create a meeting or event summary to succinctly capture date, location, focus, participants, action items, decisions, actions taken, and summarize presentations and group discussions. The project manager will review the summary and provide edits prior to contractor finalizing summary for public review and distribution. The final documents will be made AB 434 compliant by the contractor. The contractor will seek to reduce the environmental footprint of events, which can include the use of public transportation, low mission vehicles, carpools, etc. Plan with the venue to provide collection bins for recyclables, Use paper that contains at least 30% post-consumer fiber for name tags, badges, et cetera. 
If attendees would like copies of specific materials, provide these via email or post on e event website whenever possible. Encourage participants to electronically copy presentations. Support teleconferencing and web-based meetings. The contractor will provide for facilitation of 12, between 12 to 18 in-person or web-based BES meetings to be held throughout California. The locations must all meet, sorry, the locations must meet all accessibility requirements and provide internet access, ideally as Wi-Fi. Each meeting will be publicly noticed. The contractor will identify and implement a web-based virtual meeting platform, as well as applicable and beneficial nested collaborative platforms, such as polling tools, whiteboard tools, et cetera. Task three, support public outreach and communication. Assist DTSC and BES in preparing and editing documents and outreach material. Services include graphic design services and technical and copy editing. Contractor will make all documents AB 434 compliant, ensuring they are web compliant for posting. Task number four, provide technical support. In coordination with DTSC and BES, the contractor shall secure or provide webcasting capabilities with call and dial and audio options, which can also support interpretive services. The contractor shall provide or secure audio visual equipment that will include projectors, audio recorders, PA system, microphones, and projection equipment as needed. The contractor shall work with the facility to provide or secure meeting rooms with multiple phone lines for comment for commentators and various languages. Task number five, prepare final reports. The contractor shall develop and distribute a succinct final report for each event's proceedings, which may include summary notes, highlights, action items, and recommendations for future events. And finally, task six, project management. The contractor shall compile and report all financial activities for the agreement, including a draft event budget, actual expenses incurred, and a final reconciliation of all project activities. Thank you. Thank you, Swathi. Uh, can I have a motion, please, so we can put this on the table for discussion? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the agreement with the California State University Sacramento Agreement number 21-T5096 in the maximum amount of $187,277.50 and to authorize Jessica Hines, DTSC's Chief of Contracting Service, to execute said agreement. I further move that we authorize Executive Officer Sharma to negotiate, finalize, and approve an amendment or amendments to the agreement with the California State University Sacramento Agreement Number 21-T5096 regarding both insurance requirements and a deliverable schedule, and to authorize Jessica Hines, DTSC's Chief of Contracting Service, to execute said agreement or amendments, excuse me, to, ex to execute said amendment or amendments to Agreement Number 21-T5096 upon approval by Executive Officer Sharma. Thank you. Do we have a second? I second. Please. And I just want to make note for all those in attendance or watching that Jessica Hines is with us. She's at the far end of the table um, and both compliment her and express our deep gratitude for the work that she did for us to be able to get this contract um, here. She's the chief con Chief of Contracting Services for DTSC and just provided us incredible support on a timeline that was very aggressive. And if you could see her eyes smiling, uh, one of the reasons which we mentioned at the, um, in setting this meeting up is that by securing this contract in this fiscal year, we are able to encumber the expenses in a year that we had less expense because we didn't fully come together until March and that gives us a little bit more latitude um, for next year's budget. So our gratitude is deep on that. Thank you. If there are questions for Jessica or, um, or uh, Swathi, 
please, uh, now's the right time and we'll have board discussion. I see Georgette's hand up. I have a question, but before maybe, I don't know if there's any public comments. Just for the purposes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, the question that I have is in regards to task number three, the support public outreach and communications, is that gonna also be um, in multiple languages? I believe that translation contract is a separate one. And would you envision, Jessica and Swati, would you envision, excuse me, would you envision the belonging? So the question, let's just get clarity. Um, the question was in task number three, is which is number support three. public outreach and communications, if that too is, are we expecting that to be a multiple languages? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time um, hearing you down here at this end. I think there's an echo. Would you mind repeating Yeah. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, on task number three, the support public outreach and communications, if that is also expected to be in multiple languages. Thank you. Yes, um, I, I would agree with the statement that was made earlier. I think that will be a part of the separate contract with the for the translation and interpretive services that um, that we are currently developing. Okay. Um, okay. I, um, yeah. No, that's fine. But I think translation and the way that we actually do outreach is yes. two different tasks. The intent is to announce our meetings and communicate in at least English and Spanish correct? And that should there be a compelling reason or an understanding that we need another language for our outreach, given where the meetings are, then we will, we will also accommodate that. So that's, that's, am I correct? Swathi and Jessica, does that? So they're nodding their heads. Okay. Yes. For those of you who are uh, counting on audio here. And we're in the process of that contract now, correct? That is correct. Would you elaborate on, on what you think the status of that and the timing of that is? Absolutely. Uh, the, the services are currently um, out for bid. We are doing a small business solicitation and the bids are due on Tuesday next week. <clears throat> And uh, we will be evaluating those bids um, for the following week and hope to be able to uh, make a determination on a winner within a week to two weeks. So is, is it our goal? So everyone heard uh, that, that this contract, because it's an interagency contract, we could contract directly with CSUS without a, an open bid and they know how to provide these services. The, the translation is out for competitive bid, and then it has to be evaluated. Do you anticipate that part of the contract being um, executed, not before the end of this fiscal year, because we don't have another meeting to review that, correct? That is correct. And it will be in excess of the 50, anticipated in excess of the $50,000 limit for contracting that we have authorized our executive officer to independently uh, contract. Do I have that right? That is correct. Okay, so apparently I managed to be correct, which Just means her. that more than likely, and we should take note that the July meeting will be a meeting at which we will address that contract. So I think we should make note for the agenda for July that we'll be evaluating the uh, translation contract. Yeah, and I just wanna make, it, make, make sure that I'm clear. I think translation and outreach are completely different tasks. So I just wanna make sure that as we're developing text, task three, that we keep in mind um, engagement to multilingual communities. Yes. So I just wanted to yes. clarify with task three, um, this contractor is not tasked with doing the outreach. They're tasked with editing and helping us prepare the documents, which then with the other contract would be um, translated into multiple languages, whoever that vendor ends up being. Um, so in terms of documents and outreach material, um, that's the scope of task three, but not necessarily uh, public engagement. 
So there is a Not working, quite. there's a list of all the people who've signed up in whatever languages for um, DTSC meetings, BES meetings, and that massive list is communicated with for all of our meetings. Our additional task as a board is to identify um, outreach opportunities, community groups, individuals, and to get them registered to receive the materials. So we have an outreach obligation to bring more communities to the table and then the translators and, and drive them to our website where we can give them information about meetings. So the outreach will be in the office of the ombuds and the board. That's our job is the reaching out. Their job is to be sure the materials are well done, timely, and get to the people that we identify. Yes? Okay. Okay, and really quickly, um, just in case this wasn't said earlier, CSUS stands for California State University Sacramento. Thank you for that clarification. Other questions about the contract? This is a great opportunity to dive into some of the things that those of us who've been working on it are more familiar and others aren't. So when we're all together, it's the time to drill down on, on any questions that have arisen for you. Alexis? I can't remember, but I believe in the original document, what the end of the, the end of the performance period is a year hence. Jessica, this is a question for you. And um, would we need um, to be taking action this time next year to reinitiate a contract of this nature? Uh, yes, I would recommend that. I, I would recommend we start uh, just a little bit earlier uh, <laughs> next year. Um, <laughs> she said so graciously. Um, I, I, I think that uh, my recommendation would be um, if we are planning on extending this contract next year past June 30th of 2023, that uh, we would uh, start that planning, uh, those planning activities in February. February. So let's make note that um, that's an action item for us as a board to secure, to begin the process. And, and I assume that falls to you, um, Swathi, to 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 commence the process in February so that at a spring meeting we will be, um, we'll be able to um, proceed and take a vote and not, not put uh, anybody through what the last two weeks have been. Yes, Alexis? Just a follow-up question, Jessica. Would that in entail you um, completely renegotiating the contract or does it have extension periods? Uh, be, because it's with a public entity, we we have the authority to extend. Uh, so it, it would uh, we would not have to renegotiate terms or or even um, rates. It would just be looking at how much time we wish to extend and making sure that we add uh, sufficient funds to cover that time period. Thank you. That's good questions. Any other questions, comments? Greg, are we good? Okay. We have um, no public comments. So, uh, Jessica, will you uh, call the roll? I sure will. Give me just one moment. Uh, Jeannie Rizzo. Yes. Shushma Bhatia. Yes. Georgette Gomez. Yes. And Alexis Strauss-Hacker. Yes. And Lizette Ruiz is um, absent today, and so we have four ayes and one um, abstention, one absentee, and so the motion passes. Thank you. So now we will move on to public comment for any items not on the agenda. We do not have any callers in the queue for my public members that are in the meeting. Do you guys have any comments? No? Okay. Wonderful. So we can uh, move on to adjournment. Yes, yeah, so we have um, as a, uh, to just make note of those items that will be on future on the future agenda. Um, this is an opportunity and I'll ask Alexis to, um, to summarize what's on future agendas. We just took note of one mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Our next Board of Environmental Safety meeting will be held in the Los Angeles area in July. And at that meeting, um, our executive officer will be giving a report 
that will most likely include the hiring status of key board positions, um, budget status since the state fiscal year will have just ended, um, an update on this contract that we um, have just approved, and the forthcoming translation contract as referenced by Jessica Hines and Swati Sharma. We're going to spend a bit of time on our 2023 calendar of our likely meetings and workshops. And we're going to be spending much of our time at the July meeting in a workshop format, um, perhaps the entirety of the afternoon, um, discussing what we had learned on the day prior, July 10th, um, through various field visits and hearing from community members, groups, companies, whomever may be participating in our meeting. We're going to forecast with member Bhatia um, the development of the BES strategic plan and other things that we are still discussing as we shape that agenda and it will certainly be posted. We will most likely update our permit appeal timeline to reflect um, our best efforts to get that underway, but our focus in July will be um, on community input and the board's listening to issues with a Southern California focus. Just very quickly, the meeting is scheduled for July 11th um, and the, um, the board will be going on a tour um, as well as meeting with community groups on July 11th. Yes. Yes, the, the, we'll be separating into groups. We won't be going as a group of five. We'll have three separate um, opportunities to go out with community members to locations that we're still developing. Then on the 12th will be the board meeting that will have a workshop, major workshop component where the report back from uh, the day of uh, touring and engaging with community members on the 11th We'll have that on the on the twelfth within the scope of the of the meeting. So we're we're liking this idea of uh, and thank you, Greg, for helping us figure out how to do it. Where we have a board meeting, and within a board meeting, we have a workshop, which is a more interactive opportunity, where we're not just hearing comments that aren't on the agenda. We're actually engaging and hearing from the community and being able to respond back in real time. So. We're developing this format. We certainly will want to hear from folks at the July meeting and after how that goes, because we think that may be a model that we want to continue for at least a significant number of our meetings going forward. Any other comments? Madam Chair, my apologies, and thank you, Jessica, for correcting me. I sowed confusion by giving the wrong dates. Oh. <laughs> We understand the 11th is the tour and the 12th is the meeting. actual board meeting. So thank you for that. And it looks also contrary to our earlier uh, planning, it looks like we're likely to be meeting in the city of Montebello in the city council chambers. So thank you to Elsa Lopez and Patrice Brown for making that yeah. happen. It was um, a, a technological challenge with the venue that we thought we were going to be in that usually has all the services we need, but COVID has caused them to suspend something and here we are. Yeah, so the meeting location um, is still up in the air. It will be announced on the final agenda, which will be posted 10 days in advance. Um, but we are expecting to have that meeting in the Los Angeles area near the City of Commerce. Right, and the one other agenda item that um, I am asking to put on the um, agenda for July and to notice uh, to that effect is um, uh, my request that we, um, that the board vote on and appoint a vice chair, someone who stands in for the chair in the event that she is unable to participate or whatever happens, can't be at a meeting. Uh, we feel that that's an important governance model. Uh, and I'm, I will be nominating um, Alexis Strauss Hacker. So those who have thoughts about the concept of vice chair, it's really, um, Alexis has been fu functioning in many regards in that way and has stayed up to, up to date on all these administrative issues. And I feel like it's important that we don't leave things um, unattended to in that regard. So 
That'll also be on the agenda for July. So you have plenty of time to think about it. Any other, there are some thank yous for today besides, yes, Jessica, do you have something? Okay, let's. Okay, um, while we're waiting for the comment from a community member, uh, I want to thank Christy Spotsville, Jerry Dietrich, Catherine Pitts, Suze Houghton, Patrice Bowman, Greg Lyle, Jessica Swan, Kim Smith, Matt Cummings, and our translator, Manuel Lopez, and of course, Jessica Hines. Just to give you an idea of the additional support staff that it takes to create a meeting that appears as as simple and straightforward as this one, it takes a lot of people. So we have a lot of gratitude and we want to thank them for that. Thank you. Are you ready with the comment? Not yet. Okay, we'll give it a few minutes. If there's a public comment, we want to hear it. Unknown participant is now joining. Hello. Hi, Cynthia. Jessica? Hi, yes, this is Jessica. So you are now dialed into the um, Board of Environmental Safety meeting. If you'd like to make your um, comment, the chair has recognized you. If you could just state your name and affiliation for the record. Great, right now? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, Cynthia Babbage, Delomo Action Committee. Um, I just want to really make sure that you hear um, what one of the members was saying about translation and outreach. DTSC has had a problem in the past with understanding the difference between engagement and actually working with communities, which is, I hope, one of the things that the board looks at. But I think that person brought it up um, a couple times, and I don't really think that you heard what she was saying. And so um, I wish I could be there in person, but this is a problem that I'm highlighting for you. Communities do want to engage with you, but simply just being spoken to all the time without the one and one back and forth is not cutting it for us. So I'm sorry for the complications to get my comment in, and I do appreciate that you took the time to work through it so that I could make this statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. I think it's important to note um, that we, we do take that concern very seriously. Unknown participant is now exiting. Okay. And that as far as the contractor is concerned, that's not their part of the task for outreach. I think that's what we were trying to clarify. We have an office of ombuds that we will be uh, we'll be hiring for an ombuds person and two people within that, the, that group. They will be tasked with the primary responsibility of developing the outreach, developing and seeing and ensuring that it's translated appropriately. Working with board members, we have two board members on the environmental justice subcommittee, Georgette and Lizette. They will be working along with Swathi, with the ombuds person, to develop different outreach efforts to identify community groups and individuals, going through the list of people who have responded um, either on calls or in person at our meetings. And I know you are one person that I believe um, Alexis has been talking about meeting with when we go down there on July 11th. So we do appreciate that comment, and it is very much our intention to execute on that. Does anyone, Swathi, do you have anything else you want to talk about in terms of the ombuds role? No, I, I think you summarized it well and just wanted to just clarify just so that we know as we're talking about the contract and with um, CSUS that that piece of it, it's, it's more so that they're helping us with the documentation, what's posted publicly once we get the translation vendor, um, what's you know, translated appropriately in the languages, if it's multiple languages. But in terms of what um, CSUS is responsible for, 
it's it's pretty specific and I'm happy to go through um, the specifics of the contract, but it's really uh, three items for CSUS. It's one to assist the DTSC um, DTSC and board in preparing and editing the ES related documents and outreach material to improve clarity, flow, meaning, and readability. Services include, but not limited to graphic design services and technical and copy editing services, correcting punctuation, grammar, spelling, word choice, inconsistency in usage, content heading, subheading, citation. Task three, whenever applicable, the contractor will provide invitations or other announcements to promote participation in meetings. And then the contractor will make all documents AB434 compliant, ensuring they are web compliant for posting to DTSC's public website. So it, it's really, they're helping with what those documents, once they are going to post, but it's really up to us, the ombuds, um, once those three people are hired, myself, the board members to do the, the public engagement, which is so critical and such an important piece. Um, and, I'm, and thank you for the comment, but that's not CSUS's responsibility. It's ours and the ombuds. Are there any other public comments or comments from the from the board members? Hey, can we have a motion to adjourn? Madam Chair, I so move. Is there a second? Second. For clarity, uh, member Alexis Strauss-Hacker motioned and uh, member Georgette Gomez seconded. All. And all in favor, we have a consensus. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.